Besides Blender, I've started using Unreal Engine in my 3D workflow because of how powerful it is. In this video, I will show you how you can also start using Unreal Engine, as seen from a Blender user's perspective. So, let's start off with project navigation. Unreal Engine comes with more different project presets than Blender does. For creating 3D environments to make beautiful renders, I would recommend choosing the blank film preset. Let's also turn on starter content and ray tracing. Once you've done that, click on create new project. Unlike Blender, the viewport movement in Unreal Engine is actually pretty straightforward. Using the middle bounce button, you can drag the viewport. You can rotate the viewport by pressing the right mouse button. And to move around, press the right mouse button and use WASD. You can also press Q or E to move up and down. So basically it's just video game controls. You can also change the speed with which you move by changing this slider. Or you can press the right mouse button and scrolling on your scroll wheel. To change the shading of your viewport and prevent undesirable GPU usage, change Lit to Unlit, which is basically the same as Material Preview mode in Blender. You can also change it to Wireframe or any other of these options, but most likely you would change it to Unlit. To move objects around in your scene, you will use these tools. You can click on them, or you can use the shortcuts Q, W, E and R. You can also disable or change the snapping amount of the different transformations using these buttons. On the left side of your screen you can add standard objects to your scene such as cameras, shapes, lights, etc. If this panel is not opened up, click on the Place Actors button right here. Rendering a single frame as you would in Blender is not possible in Unreal Engine because it's more focused on the renderings of animations. To render a single frame I would recommend piloting the camera object and taking a high resolution screenshot of the screen. Or you can always render out an animation that is one frame long. By pressing Ctrl and Space you can open up the content browser. In here you can add, import and modify all different kinds of content assets. To render out an animation, you will first need to make sure that you have a camera placed in your scene. If not, add one through the Place Actors panel. Once you have done that, right click in the content browser, search cinematics and add a new level sequence. In this level sequence, you want to place your camera and everything that you may want to keyframe. You can see all of the settings right here and you can add keyframes to them. Once you're done, click on the render button and if you want, you can already render out everything locally with the standard settings. If you want to change your render settings, click on the unsaved config button and add any of the settings that you want. I would recommend searching a good YouTube tutorial video on what the best render settings are for you. To add any plugins to your project, simply go to settings and press on the plugins button. In here, it's the same as adding add-ons inside of Blender but you may need to restart Unreal Engine after you have enabled any plugins. Currently in Unreal Engine 5.2, there is no modeling menu in your project from the get-go. But you can add a modeling menu to your project by enabling the Static Mesh Modeling Editor plugin. This plugin gives you all the basic options for modeling, like for example adding booleans or transforming imported meshes. It can also be used for modeling your own assets, but for a battle modeling experience, I would recommend doing that inside of Blender because it currently has more advanced modeling features. Inside of the modeling menu, you can also add displacement to any surfaces. To do this, first add in a rectangle and give it the material that you want. Then remesh it and give it some triangles. Once you have done that, you can press on the displacement option, set it to texture 2D map and add in a height map right here. If you have downloaded any of the Megascan surfaces, you can add in the weird yellowish looking third map right here and set the color channel to be blue to get the hype map. You can play around with the displacement intensity right here and change it to what looks right. Unreal Engine also has a landscape mode, which makes it really easy to add large scale landscapes to your projects. You can either create a simple plain landscape and with the brushes you can create mountains, valleys or any other sort of terrain. Or you can create a landscape based on a height map, 
which most of the time results in a very high detailed landscape. To create a landscape based on a height map, when creating a new landscape, change the create new option to import from file. And in here, add in your height map file. Also change the necessary options and then press import. This will create a landscape based on your height map. You can add a new material in Unreal Engine in your content browser. But unfortunately, all of the nodes in the material editor are named differently than they are inside of Blender. So unless you want to simply add in an image texture, you will need to relearn all of the names of the new nodes. There are two features that Unreal Engine has that makes it extremely attractive to a lot of people. Those features are the integration of both the Megascan library and the Unreal Engine marketplace, which you can both easily access through the menu. If you don't know, Megascans is a very large online library of extremely detailed photo scans. These amazing assets can all be freely downloaded with an Epic Games account. And because the Megascans library is integrated into Unreal Engine, you can easily download and search all the assets and they will automatically be added to your content browser. The Unreal Engine Marketplace is basically the same, but it isn't limited to simple photo scanned assets. You can download various kinds of different things here. For example, you can download code if you're interested in game development, but if you just want to create beautiful scenes, you can download different kinds of asset packs, such as, for example, high quality foliage packs. I would also highly recommend you to at least once open your Unreal Engine Marketplace at least every month because then you can download all of the free for the month assets totally for free and you can keep them forever. And by doing this, you will build up a pretty nice library of different kinds of assets. All of the assets from the Megascans library and most of the assets from the Unreal Marketplace are suited for Nanite. Nanite is one of the main reasons why Unreal Engine is so powerful. Normally, when you place a 3D model in your scene, it renders out all of the vertices of that object. But when you enable Nanite for a specific mesh, it renders less and less vertices the farther away the object is placed in the scene. Because of this, you can place highly detailed models in your scene without losing performance. To turn on Nanite for a specific object, locate the object in your content browser, and simple double click or right click on the object and enable Nanite. Let's explore one more different mode inside of Unreal Engine, the foliage mode. In here you can easily paint with foliage on surfaces so that you don't have to place them manually. With any of the Megascan foliage packs downloaded, simply go to the foliage tab Import the foliage meshes that you want to paint with. Maybe change the scale in the settings so that it's a little bit randomized. And then with the brush selected, you can paint your foliage meshes on any surface just like how we painted in the landscape mode. Now let's talk about three things that you absolutely need to know for making your scene look the way you want it to look. First, to change the position of the sun in Unreal Engine, press Ctrl and L and then move your mouse. By doing this you will get this sun diagram in your viewport which shows exactly from which point the sun is shining onto your scene. Next let's also add in a post-processing volume and directly make sure that it is set to unbounded by enabling that feature in the settings. In your post-processing volume, there are a lot of different settings that you can play around with to make your scene look the way you want it to look. Finally, let's also add in an exponential height fog to create some fog in our scene. But as you can see, if we turn up the fog density, the fog doesn't look right. So to make the fog actually look real, scroll down in the settings and turn on volumetric fog. As a bonus tip, also play around with the different scattering settings of your directional sunlight. In this scene, I had my indirect scattering turned up very high to make sure that the inside of the room was properly lit. 
Finally, let's talk about decals. Decals are a really easy and performance friendly way to add a lot of details to your scene. For example, you can see that this scene looks way better with a lot of decals added to it. Decals basically are stickers that you can place on objects and surfaces in your scene. So to add them to your scene, simply go to the Megascans library, go to decals and download your desired decals and drag them into your scene. If you want to place your decals on a wall, you may need to rotate them 90 degrees if they don't look right. I hope that this video was helpful to someone and I hope that I sparked your curiosity about learning Unreal Engine 5. If you still have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below and I will try to answer every single one. Goodbye and good luck with your renders.